Okay, in lesson 6.5, we will be analyzing and sketching graphs. So take a look at the distance versus time graph to the right. You can see the descriptions. We have this part right here, which is increasing. And because it's a relatively straight, well, it is straight, that would be increasing at a constant rate. Okay, noticing the middle section right here, there's no change, okay? Time is passing, but you're not changing the distance so this could be possibly stopped at a red light or something like that. Time keeps going, but you are not traveling. And finally, the last segment is decreasing, and it's actually decreasing at a pretty rapid rate because the slope is very steep. So that's going to be another thing that we'll be talking about, whether it's a gradual rate of change or a um, rather quickly or fast rate of change, okay? So let's look at these A, B, C, and D, and it's funny, they label them A, B, C, and D at the bottom. So the description at the bottom, you gradually increase your speed, then you ride at a constant speed along a bike path. You then slow down until you reach your friend's house. So we're going to have to show the increase. So we're looking for an increase. Okay. So looking at A, it definitely increases. B does not increase from the start. C increases at the start and D increases. So A, C, and D are possibilities. Then we're going to ride at a constant speed. So now we're not increasing or decreasing our speed. So when you look at A, it looks like you're traveling, right? Increasing your speed, then you're rapidly increasing your speed. In D, you're increasing your speed and then decreasing your speed. So C, we are increasing, then it is constant. And then let's see the last part, then you slow down. So now we're decreasing. So C, would be the right graph for the first description. Looking at the second description, you gradually increase your speed, then you go downhill. You then quickly come to a stop at an intersection. So looking at A, B, and C, again we can rule out B because that's like a steady speed right at the beginning. So. I bet you guys are all looking at D, that you increase your speed, then go downhill, because it looks like a mountain. But what happens to your speed when you go downhill? Is it slower or faster? So I want you to look closer at A. You increase your speed. Think about what happens, how steep this gets. When you're going downhill, the speed um, quickly increases, and then it says you quickly come to a stop, right? Right there, you literally stop, and then decrease, right here, you're, you're, you're starting to decrease at that stop. So for that reason, it is A. Description C. You gradually increase your speed, then you stop at a store for a couple of minutes, you then continue to ride. Again, B is not increasing a speed at the beginning, so that's going to make it D, but let's follow along. So gradually increasing right here, okay, it's not terribly steep. When you stop at a store, you're going to decrease until you get to the stop point, and then this where time is passing, but your, your speed is not increasing or decreasing right here along this x-axis, that is when you stop at the store for a couple of minutes. Then you're going to continue riding and increasing your speed, so that's why it is D. 
And finally, let's look at B. We know that it's going to be B. You're writing at a constant speed, so speed is not increasing or decreasing. You're going to go up a hill. When you go up a hill, you tend to travel at a slower speed because it is harder work to go up the hill. Once at the top of the hill, right, you're increasing your speed. So this could be level ground again or possibly starting to travel downhill a little bit. So that's why it would be B. So we're going to get a chance to describe the path of each bird. So looking at the pelican, you can see the vertical distance and the horizontal distance. The pelican is traveling along and it's actually descending. And at first it's descending slowly and then it starts to descend pretty quickly until it gets to the ground. As it gradually approaches the ground, it's descending slowly again. And for the osprey to the right, it's descending at a constant rate. That straight line, remember the straight lines are the linear part of it, is telling us that it's a constant rate, but then it's a more rapid constant rate or faster as it approaches the earth. Okay, for part B, make three comparisons from the graphs. Well, we can tell that they are both decreasing. We know that they're both nonlinear. And if you look at the pelican, it's steeper in the middle, and at the osprey, it's steeper towards the end. So we can say that, you know, both graphs are decreasing, both nonlinear. They both have two, um, the osprey has two linear sections, right? So it's two straight lines kind of connected at a joint there in the middle. Um, and then it says the pelican's descent steepest in the middle and the osprey steepest at the end. Now we get to sketch the graphs. So a fully charged battery loses its charge at a constant rate. Now that constant rate is going to tell us that we'll probably have a linear section, so it might be a straight line, until it has no charge left. It's going to be down at the bottom with an empty charge. Then you're going to plug it in, and it will charge at a constant rate. And then it's going to lose its charge again. So looking at the graph, it starts out at the top, up here because it starts out at a full charge then here's that losing the charge at the constant rate then you're charging it up at a constant rate then it's discharging at a constant rate okay so the con when it tells you that it's a constant rate then you know you have a straight line segment for, t for number three, it says, as the available quantity of a product increases, the price decreases at a decreasing rate. So, um, the quantity, here's something we have to look at. The quantity is increasing. So here, going across here, this part is increasing, okay? But the price is decreasing. And so, it's decreasing pretty steep right here and then pretty gradual. Notice how it's approaching zero, but it hasn't quite reached zero. Okay, that might be something that starts out at a higher price, and then, um, you know, the more you have, then the price decreases, things like that, or the, the amount you're buying. A lot of times when you buy in bulk, the more you buy, the price goes down. So let's describe the relationship between the two quantities. So again, using our words to describe, you can kind of see you will have an increase, a decrease, an increase, kind of a constant, and then an increase again. Over to the right, increase, decrease pretty rapidly, increase. So we could use our words. It says the sales dollars, because in graph one, we're talking about sales, the dollars are going to increase quickly, and it's kind of linear, so at a constant rate, it will decrease quickly, it will increase quickly, then it will stay constant for a time, a few months maybe, and then increase quickly again at that constant rate. For number two, your bicycle speed will increase quickly at a constant rate, decrease quickly at a constant rate, and then increase quickly at a constant rate again.
if you were to sketch the graphs. You are told that you're texting a friend at a constant rate. You send the message, then you wait for a response. Once you receive a response, you begin texting a reply at a constant rate. So that constant rate's telling you you're going to have a straight line, but here's something that's going to look a little bit different to us because when we're waiting for the reply, what's happening? We're not texting. So our graph is a constant rate, right? It's not increasing, it's not decreasing. So we're texting, 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 stop. Wait, 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 wait. Get a reply, text, 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 text. Okay, and it's, rate, it's counting it in words per minute. What about your fingernails? You cut your fingernails, let the nails grow back, cut them again. So this would be another gap in the graph because in this case, the length of your nails is going to increase. You'll cut them, and it'll take the length down immediately. They'll increase. You'll cut them, and then they'll increase. So you could have things like nails, hair, things like that that will have disjointed um, graphs, and you can explain it this way. So, it, so you can see the break in the graph is when you cut it, so it goes from one length to another instantly.